We the best, no contest. My click is the best. We the There ain't no one like us, are you dumb or you crazy? There's no way, G, me and my clique, we handling biz While you and your clique just act full gazy You couldn't persuade me to give a damn it, this don't phase me I got my Xbox, she can't play me Money in a text box, I get paid We the best, we the best No contest up and welcome back everybody so uh we are back at the shop it's thursday night uh week before christmas weekend and uh like i've been telling you guys over and over again since i'm on vacation from school we're actually making a lot of progress on a lot of different things so behind me back there you'll see gabriel's transmission is over there that's gonna get opened up so we can figure out the fourth gear issue and install the m factory lsd um over here we're actually removing the motor and uh the reason that we're removing the motor is because as i have been learning to measure out these motors and get a lot more precise and i've been getting like better tools to be able to precisely measure all these different clearances um i don't believe well not that i don't believe i never measured piston to wall clearance when i assembled this engine which means that it's probably running the stock uh piston to wall clearance which is not a good thing the reason i say that is because there's forged pistons in here um, if anybody's watched the assembly video where I put the pistons in here, nobody ever commented or anything like that or uh, made a note of it. I'm sure maybe some of the people thought about it, but they're like, ah, whatever, he'll figure it out eventually. Who knows? But anyways, <clears throat> long story short, with all the trips I've been making to the machine shop, dropping blocks off and stuff like that and talking to the guys there, um, they told me that I had to be careful with piston and wall clearances on forged pistons because forged pistons actually tend to expand a lot more than cast pistons do so typically when you run a cast piston you run it kind of tight you run about 12 one thousandths of clearance uh, i believe these motors call for anywhere from four ten thousandths i believe to 16 one thousandths of clearance um which is a pretty wide range and if you remember the one motor or the one set of pistons that i measured were like Basically, between those and the block that they were going in, they had about 12 one thousandths of clearance. So if there's 12 one thousandths of clearance in here, that's not good. Basically, what will end up happening is the pistons will end up scratching the hell out of the sleeves. And they'll get worn down and we'll end up losing the motor and we'll end up losing the pistons. I have a feeling that when I take this thing apart and I measure everything, we're going to be seeing somewhere between 12 to 15 one thousandths worth of clearance. Best case scenario, we will see maybe 19 one thousandths. But that's still not enough for a forged piston. I believe at the machine shop they told me you want for for a forged piston application you want somewhere between twenty five to thirty one thousandths, um, which is anywhere from one third to basically about one third to a half more than what we might find in here. But uh, not really sure how far I'm gonna get into that uh, tonight. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully, if everything goes good. Um, I will hopefully have everything assembled and going back in by sometime next week, but we'll see because I have a party to go to on Saturday and then I have to start working on the Astro on Sunday, which basically consists of pulling the motor, taking some measurements of the block. The heads are going to the machine shop and, uh, yeah, so I'll basically have to juggle both of these projects side by side and I don't know, we'll figure it out, but I'm hoping that by next weekend, both of these should be done so we'll see so we got john here helping me out and uh we quickly went ahead and just disconnected the harness and everything lines and everything are out we only have to take the three bolts out for the mount right here and uh motor's getting ready to come out it's going to come out with the turbo the manifold intake manifold uh clutch flywheel the whole nine um you know what i think i actually might take the clutch off right now because it'll be easier to take it off right now while this thing is being suspended up in the air rather than fighting with it on the ground um and it'll be easier to put a breaker bar in here and lock it up against the frame rail to break off the uh the flywheel bolts so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick get the motor on the ground and then i'm gonna have john help me 
lift it up and put it up on that stand over there so I can start stripping it down. All right, so flywheel clutches off. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and undo these uh, three mount bolts right here. And the motor should come out. There's gonna be one hell of a balancing act. All right, let's get to it. All right, well, and just like that, the motor's out again. All right, time to get it on the stand. Uh, oh, did you say crack open? One of those magnets. One of the magnets. Oh, the magnet uh, tray. Yeah. Hey, every time I hear Bachata, it reminds me of uh, this one dude I used to play in the band with. A dude named Victor, he's Dominican. He was the only Dominican dude in the band. And now that I think about it, you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of the guy who did that, the stand-up guy who did that joke about the Honda Civic. He was like, no, they on the Civic. Uh-uh. Like, he reminds me of that guy. <laughs> Yo, it's funny you say that. Yo, I gotta say that to Mike. <laughs> I heard you. It's funny you say that because I was just at a... Um, I was just at a, at the gas station. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that buddy like just came from New York, bro. Like had to. I was at the gas station and I pulled into the parking space. Buddy walks past my car. And when he walks in front of my car, I'm like slowly creeping up. And he goes, <laughs> I shit you not, dude. Exactly like this. He goes, he's like, hey, Bobby. <laughs> so I'm like, I stick my head out the window. And he goes, so this is the spaceship, Bobby? And I'm like, the what? <laughs> he goes, the spaceship, the spaceship, Bobby, this is the spaceship. And I'm like, the spaceship? And he goes, yeah. He goes, this right here, the spaceship. He's like, what, this factory right here, Bobby? What's this? And I'm like, what the? I'm like, hold on, hold on, let me get out the car. I get out the car. He's talking about the blue headlights. He goes, he goes, yeah, Bobby, the spaceship, the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. He goes, yeah, the, the, he goes, these things. He's like, these things came from like factory like that or what? I was like, no, dude, it's a wrap. I just, I wrapped them. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was dying. It sounded, it reminded me of, uh, of that dude. What's his name from New York? Um, I forgot his name. It's like something Bobby. Oh, um, um, with the mohawk and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't remember his name. Where he talking about though? Bruh. That's funny. <laughs> Dude, I thought I was talking about. Hey, Bobby, the spaceship. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, funny. yo, this motherfucker definitely just got here from the Bronx. Oh, what the fuck did you got to do with spaceships? But all right. <laughs> I was so lost. What the fuck? That shit was funny though. Uh, this motherfucker definitely just got here from New York. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And hey, the Bobby, dude I'm talking about, he was from New York. I know. So I know that they be doing that shit up there, especially in the Bronx, I guess. But I was dying laughing because he was like kind of in the band, but not really. He was like, our, like he was just like our homeboy, like he was cool as fuck, and he played instruments and shit. But everybody else already played all the instruments, so he would just kind of like be there and like he rapped he was actually a really good rapper and he, he like he loved like beatboxing and shit yeah so but you know, he ba basically he was into like percussion he did like like bongos and congas and like like shit like that oh that's not good this one came off from the uh from oh, the from cam the, holder yeah so <laughs> so every time so every time we would play some like like bachata or something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. this motherfucker would run to the motherfucking um fuck, what's that shit called again? Oh, the shit that Dominicans be playing that he play with a pick. Sometimes we get like, bro, that's not just Dominicans. That's like all the <laughs> what you know what I mean? <laughs> that's all the Spanish, bro. Puerto Ricans be playing that shit too. Yo, every time <laughs> shit come on, that nigga would just come out of nowhere like, yo, let me get the thing. And you come out and notice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you need to kill that shit. He's be walking around the stage and shit. He fucking. Where Mike at? Mike! <laughs> Mike know about that shit, I bet. I'm about to ask him. I bet Mike know about that. <laughs> what that shit called? 
I bet you if he, if, if he say it, I'm going to go right off the bat. Hey, Mike. Hey, we need some help. <laughs> we ain't Spanish enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm Spanish. I just want to know if it's called the same shit. So, you know that shit, right? Hey. So first off, you where are you where's your ethnicity from? Like you Dominican, Puerto Rican, where are you from? I was born in Puerto Rico and I was basically raised in uh Perfect. Perfect. No, so no. you would know. Alright, alright. Right. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter then. <laughs> so so you know that uh the that that instrument that the uh, it's like the wooden instrument with the with the strings and shit in the front, and you use the picks to play the shit? Oh yeah. I got you know what that shit is? <laughs>
All right, so this is the whole reason that this motor got taken apart. So if you guys look closely there, this thing was freshly honed. And you actually can't really see it on camera. There you go. You see all those up and down like striations right there. So basically what happens is when you have forged aluminum pistons, they tend to expand at a much, uh, at a much faster rate and they actually expand more overall than cast pistons do. So this is why the machine shop was telling me that I need to uh, go back and look over and measure the piston and wall clearance. Because if we would actually let this motor get up to temperature, um, these pistons would have probably swelled up enough to where it would have did some like really, really bad damage to these sleeves. So that, that would have really sucked. All right, y'all, so one last update. I haven't been recording much because um, my phone's been dying. Also, we've kind of been helping the neighbor out a lot with his car. He's actually going on a test drive right now. Um, and plus, I've just been kind of cranking on this thing. It's already like almost three in the morning and I still have to meet with my client by like 10 a.m. to go take this motor out of this truck. But so this is where we're at. So we're already stripped pretty much all the way down. The bolts for this are already taken off. I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil pump off now. The cranks just slide out. Pistons are out. Uh, one thing that I noticed that was really interesting, I believe it was number, was it number three? Yeah, number three. So check that out. It's kind of hard to see in the lighting, but if you see all that up and down marking, especially near the top part, that right there shows uh, kind of like the piston uh, kind of like wobbling up and down like this inside the cylinder. And I did take some measurements. That's why you see my micrometer and everything out. And the measurements do unfortunately indicate that the uh, there's too much clearance between the piston and the walls, and it's causing the, it's causing the pistons to actually like snake their way up the cylinder. Um, so I have to get with the machine shop and see what the remedy is. Um, I'm not no expert, but I am assuming that they are gonna want to bore it out. They're gonna wanna go one step up. Um, so I'm thinking maybe we can go up 0.25. We can probably order some, uh, we might have to get another set of pistons that are 0.25 over and we can bore 0.25 over and uh, that way we don't have to take too much off the block or we could do 81.5s, um, but we'll see. So that's basically where we're at right now. So the only thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and take this crank out. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the crank and I'm gonna measure um, main bearing clearances. And uh, then after that, I'm calling it a night. So yeah, so I'll pick up with you guys, uh, I guess when we get back to working on this. So with that being said, I guess this is where I'm gonna leave you guys at. Um, I will be recording the full of the uh, of the engine from the Astro tomorrow, and uh, so that'll be another video that you guys will look forward to. Like I said, I've been cranking these videos out just because I have the time off from school right now, so you know it's not really a fixed schedule or anything. But I've been putting in my time at the shop. Yeah, I can hear Mike coming down the street. That thing sounds great now. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, if you guys enjoy watching these videos, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, um, hit that bell notification because I am on a break from school. So I am uploading quite recently, but eventually once I do go to school, I'm not going to be uploading on a fixed schedule. So hit the bell notification so that way you can get notified every time I upload. And uh, yeah, so with that being said, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in once again. Catch you guys on the next one.